Hello friends, this video on coordination of bond part 17 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Octahedral, how it works. This is how it works. You see, octahedral. I will show you. This is octahedral compound. This is my d orbital. And in d orbital, I have put two stars here because for these two, the energy will go up higher. And these are the ligands, the Bauman are the ligands. They are approaching. From all these directions because the octahedral is in this shape and all these ligands are approaching from each of these direction 2 from x 2 from y and 2 from z axis now when they appear if you can see that we have explained also if it is appearing from x y z direction see x y z any direction these orbitals are this orbital is getting impacted the most because the moment it touch here it is impacted similarly if you talk about this guy also coming from x direction impacted coming from y direction impacted Z not much impacted, but X and Y it is impacted a lot. So these two orbitals are impacted a lot and their energy goes higher, all the more. And thus you can see they have got higher energy once they split. The other three orbitals is coming from these directions. If you see, it is not impacted till here. This also if you see, it is not impacted till here. Here also if you see, you can say the ligands are coming from these direction. The impact is less. Till here also it is not impacted because of the shape. The shape is like that. Same here also if it is coming here, till here it is not impacted. Right? So because of the shape, difference in shape, the d, at least for the octahedral, dz square and dx square minus y square, orbital is getting more impacted. Okay. Thus, when the electrons approach, if you see what happens is the energy goes up for total energy, but then it's a split, and then the split into two parts. So these two orbitals, the one in the star mark, these two orbitals get higher energy and the other three orbitals get low energy. So P2G, if you see there are three terms here, 1, 2 and 3, right? That is used to denote these three orbitals and EG, notice there are two terms here, E and G. This is used to denote these two orbitals. These are two terms, so two orbitals, three terms, three orbitals, again that's just a way to remember else you will get confused sometimes t2g has two orbital three orbital so t2g three terms three orbital eg two terms two orbital okay so that is for octahedral split the next is for and for splitting also what they have told is we'll talk about it right a little bit for splitting also they have given this series and they've talked about strong and weak ligands they're saying that this is a strong field ligand please note I'm not talking about strong and weak ligand, I'm talking about strong and weak field ligands because actually uh, CO may not be a very strong ligand or I minus may not be a very weak ligand. So ligands strong or weak depends on its basic strength. The more basic it is, the more strong it is. I'm talking about the field that it creates. Okay? And this is experimental data. This is whatever I'm showing you here, this is experimental data. Okay, for example, CO may create splitting something like this, and I minus may create something like this. I minus this is CO. So what I'm trying to say is, in octahedral itself, I'm talking about the octahedral splitting. You know, if I'm using the ligands, strong field ligand, like this, the splitting delta is more. Weak field ligand, the delta is less. So I hope you understood why this d x square minus y square and d this, this guy has increased the energy more dz square this is dz square this is x square minus y square and this is these three are dxy dyz and dxz they have uh, in fact their energy has decreased this you understood and this you understood this is called t2g and this is Eg. So in this case, T2G has the lower energy and Eg has the energy in case of octahedral. So you see in tetrahedral, it is other way around. We'll see that. For octahedral, this is the case. Right? And this splitting of degenerate orbitals, degenerate levels due to the presence of ligands is called crystal field splitting. Please uh, uh, pay some attention here. I'll repeat once again. The splitting of this degenerated level due to the presence of ligands in the definite geometry is called crystal field splitting. This splitting is called crystal 
seen splitting. This denoted by delta O. Why O? O holds for octahedral. You will see for tetrahedral it is different. Okay, this is called delta O. And energy of E G actually is increased by 3 by 5. So this is 3 by 5 delta O and this is 2 by 5 delta O. Here also this this will remain the same. This will also be 3 by 5 delta O, it will be 2 by 5 delta O. But what will happen is this delta O will be smaller than this delta O. This will be very big. But this 3 by 5 and 2 by 5 ratio will be maintained for octahedral splitting. Okay. And this delta naught actually, the value of this, if you see, depends on the ligands. Depends on the field produced by the ligands. And also on the charge on the metal ions, we'll see that. Depends on the charge on the metal ions also, but mostly it is dependent on the ligands. Okay. And this is the series. This will produce maximum splitting, assuming that in both cases we are using the same metal. And this will produce minimum splitting. So they are called strong and weak field ligands. Please note they are not called strong or weak ligands. They are called strong and weak field ligands. And this uh, series what you see is called spectrochemical series. This series what you see here on the top is called spectrochemical Okay, so you see three orbital is here and two is here. Here also three is here, lower and two is here. Okay, strong and weak field ligands. Please note this is not strong and weak ligands, this is strong and weak field ligands. Okay, now do you know how the strength of this ligand is determined? That we'll have a numerical on this later. The strength is determined actually by the adsorption of light. See, light adsorption we know is E is equal to H C by lambda. Okay, so energy of the light required is directly inversely proportional to lambda. So if more wavelength light is required, right? If more wavelength light is required to uh, excite electron from one to another. Or that depends on the color actually of the substance. Then we get if more wavelength, that means less energy. If less energy, that means in this case weak ligand. If less is the wavelength of the light absorbed by this particular uh, coordination complex, then that means more is the energy required. More is the energy required, that means stronger is the ligand. Hope you understand. See the way color of the complex works. In fact, we have seen in the last chapter was you have this compound absorbs only one color and apart from that seven color six colors of the sunlight it reflects back so the color it absorbs right that color it absorbs you can if you find, find the wavelength of that color you can actually know the energy required and this energy required if more that means you have a strong field ligand if the energy required is less this is weak field ligand we'll take one numerical on this Okay, now, so I told you that in the last valence bond theory, the reorganization of electron we generally take based on the data of magnetic uh, moment, experimental data, but in this case it is not required. So how it works is, see, this is the case of weak ligand, right? So we will have three orbitals here and two orbitals. This is the case of strong ligand. So we have three orbitals here and then two orbitals here. So there is a difference in the energy. Okay. So first three orbitals in both the case will go here. First three electrons in both the uh, case will go here. Strong or weak doesn't matter because the first three electrons will be in this. Now it depends on the fourth and the fourth electron, where should it go? Fourth electron, based on the Hunt's rule, actually, it should go here. Correct. But if the energy difference is so high, in that case, the fourth electron will go here. But in this case, the energy difference is not that high, the fourth electron will go here. So this guy, 
the deciding factor. The fourth electron, in this case, since the energy difference is not that high, the fourth electron will go and try to be alone because see the, there is an energy required to pair right if it is pairing it needs some energy it had two options either go to this guy this orbital and stay alone happy or pair with this electron but for pairing it needs some extra compromise and sacrifice by this electron so it had option but it chose to be in this orbital why because the difference in the orbital energy is high right for this electron it needs more energy to go here than to stay here but for this electron in this it, it, it is easier to go here than to stay here because Hunt's rule of uh, Hunt's rule says that for pairing you need energy and if you want to pair you need some energy you need some compromise two people staying together needs compromise then right Sim similar is the concept here okay so the fourth electron actually can either go in this case if you see it is going in eg fourth electron is going in eg and in this case if you see fourth electron is going in t2g plus there is a pairing here so in this case no pairing correct so now based on these only we can say if it is a strong ligand the energy difference will be high and it will go here, it will pair. Weak ligand, the energy difference is not at high, it will go to EG, it will not pair. Correct? Right? This is how it is. So, I mean, because there is something called pairing energy. So, because if it is pairing, there is some energy required. So, if the pairing energy required, let's suppose 10. And but to jump here, the difference here is let's suppose 40. So this electron has two options either give 10 joule and pair and be happy, settle down here, or give 40 joule and take independent seat. Obviously, it will try to go for this lower energy, it will not go for this. But here, let's suppose the pairing energy is still same, the pairing energy is 10, but going to this state, the new state, the energy required is only 5. Because the difference is less. The difference is less, this is the impact. Here, let's suppose pairing energy is 10 and delta is 5. So here, delta is 5. And here, delta minus 40. So, in this case, this elect the new electron, the fourth electron, has the option either give 5 energy and go here, or give 10 energy and pair. So, obviously, it will not go based on Hound's rule of. Uh, maximum suitability, it will go and sit alone here by giving 5 energy. But in this case, staying alone needs 40, and pairing needs 10. You will obviously uh, prefer for pairing. Okay, so very simple logic if delta naught is less than pairing, then it will pair. If delta naught is sorry, if delta naught is more than pairing, it will pair. Correct? If delta naught is less than pairing, it will jump to the next one. Okay? So, this type of ligands are called weak field ligands and this type of ligands are called strong field ligands. These weak field ligands actually form high spin complex. Why high spin complex? Because this electron is not pairing. So, we have more spins. We have more spins, high spin. In this kind of ligand, forms low spin complex. Why low spin complex? Because in this case there is a pairing of electron and with this if you see the number of unpaired electron is less and thus the spin is less. This is high spin. Okay. So once you know the structure actually you can comment on the color also you can comment on the magnetic behavior you can comment on a lot of this. We will discuss that. Before that, let's understand the crystal field splitting of the tetrahedral geometry. See, in the tetrahedral called coordination entity, you again have d orbital splitting, but it is in the reverse way. You see here, the T2G, the three pair went up, and EG it went down. Also, the splitting is less. Here, this is called 
delta t and delta t is actually almost 4 by 9 times of delta root this is for octahedral splitting and this is for tetrahedral splitting for the same metal and ligand obviously talking about iron and chlorine for iron and chlorine you can find octahedral octahedral splitting is more tetrahedral splitting is less okay and uh, octahedral splitting is uh, typically not large enough to force pairing Thus, low spin are rarely seen. It's always high spin because the pairing doesn't happen much because this is less, right? This is less. So typically, if you see here, we have this and we have this value here. So the difference is less. So first, second electron goes here. The third electron will definitely goes here because the difference is less. So typically, you have high spin. You generally get high spin. Low spin is uh, very rare. Because the difference of the energy is less, it does not force for pairing. Okay. So here also the difference if you see here, this part is 2 by 5 of delta t and this lower part is 3 by 5 of delta t. Okay, this is dx square minus y square, dz square and this is dx y dy so then dx. Let's see the animation for this. So here if you see these four ligands are heading to a tetrahedron there's a there's a molecule here okay and if you see here this is how they appear and the moment they appear there's a repulsion the energy goes up and then the crystal will spin into place okay now the question is in this case why dx square y square these two star ones has the lower energy if you see here the way we are approaching here tetrahedron i'm trying to put it here and we're approaching from this direction this direction, this direction, and this direction. Out of these, only one direction is affected here. We talk about this particular case, I am hitting from this direction, this direction, somewhere this direction, and this direction. In this direction, none of these ligands will have an impact because these are not in the line of the orientation of the ligands. Ligands are impacted more if you are trying, if a ligand, this d orbital is impacted more if the ligand is trying to hit in this direction. But in this case, the d orbital orientation is what you see and the ligand is coming in this direction so they are not matching and thus with that the repulsion is less repulsion is less that means the increase in energy is less and actually it decreases but in these cases we see the d the ligands are hitting in this direction so actually the moment it comes here there's a repulsion correct it is hitting in this direction so with this it is seen that here also it is hitting in this direction this direction is more repulsion. Thus, dxy, dyz, and dxz, the energy increased in case of tetrahedral, and dx square minus y square and dz square energy decreased in case of tetrahedral. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos, attend free online tests, get free study materials, find tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.